What is going on everybody? Nazdarachi coming back at you again today with another little 5.9 featured news piece. We have a couple of small bits of information to cover for everyone to keep you up to speed on some of the things going on in the gaming hemisphere. Uh, it looks like we have about one, two, three, four, like four pieces of news here, a couple little multi-parts, so it shouldn't be too terribly long a video. If you are new here, you enjoy these types of editorial style gaming news pieces, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell so that we can see you again on all future uploads. And if you do enjoy this type of content, consider leaving a like on it, help spread it out, feed the algorithm a little bit. We supremely appreciate all of you who support us. But let's get directly into the news here. Don't want to waste too much of you guys' time today. Fall Guys did come out with a Guinness Book World Record as the most downloaded PS Plus game of all time. The exact figures haven't been released yet, but it's interesting because this game really came out of nowhere. It had an extremely high come up, like a very fast rise to fame. And it kind of fell off a little bit as they struggled to implement new content quickly, being a very small development team. That's very understandable. But I think it's kind of come back up a little bit and leveled, uh, leveled off at a pretty nice spot where there's a lot of variations on the stages, a lot of different pieces of content, ways to play that weren't available on the full release where it definitely feels like a more complete package now. And due to what I suspect would be a lot of the Twitch streamers and people in the content creation hemisphere who encouraged other people to get the game so they could enjoy it with their friends. It's gotten a nice little accolade here. So there's a lot of text here, but it basically boils down to the fact that Fall Guys has been pretty successful. They're in their fifth season now, a lot of Jungle Book theme content going on, and even a crossover with that brand new game, Kenna, The Bridge of Spirits. There's skins for that in the game as of right now. So. Good on you, Fall Guys, and Mediatronic, Mediatonic, for your, you know, accomplishment here. That's pretty neat when you consider that there's been a lot of games on PS Plus, a lot of big hits, AAA titles. It's neat that a uh, kind of indie game like this could come out of nowhere and get a pretty big accomplishment under their belt. So, again, congratulations to you guys, but we shall be moving on to the next piece now. Good old games, GOG. We will not tolerate review bombing after Hitman releases Sparks Online DRM Backlash. Basically, to sum this whole article up for you guys, the Hitman Game of the Year edition just launched on GOG recently, and GOG is a website that prides itself on providing games with a robust offline experience with no DRM, like no anti-cheat, no online, no worry about any of that stuff. You won't have to have the persistent connection. So people that live in rural areas, or maybe if you're on the go, whatever other reason where you can't always be online, you'd still be able to enjoy some of these games. But there was a lot of backlash when it came to Hitman because even though the base experience of the game, like the basic campaign and some of the, you know, just features on the title screen do function without a persistent online connection, it turns out that a majority of the game still does require that online connection to function in terms of unlocking new equipment, new spawn points for maps, you know, additional suits and cosmetics. All of that still requires an online connection which users feel was not properly represented on the GOG site before they bought it, which led them to giving the game on GOG a 1.4 out of 5 rating, which is a terrible score for a game that is actually considerably good, and it was pretty successful also. So most of the reviews, of course, mention the online DRM. You can play through the game with basic options, but many features, like I mentioned, such as unlocking weapons, items, outfits, locations, and more are locked behind the online requirement. So the GOG page apparently did not make this clear and is very misleading. So people are basically saying, the game doesn't belong here because even though it is at a core level playable, the experience is not intact and they think that good old games, GOG should not have released it. Of course, they responded via a forum post telling their disgruntled customers that they are free to refund the game if they're not happy with the experience. And they also tried to sneak in a warning about review bombing, which gave them a little bit more backlash, apparently. Thank you for bringing this topic to our attention, reads a statement issued by a rep called Chandra. We're looking into it and we'll be updating you in the coming weeks. In case you have purchased Hitman or not satisfied with the release version, you can use your right to refund the game. At the same time, while we're open for meritful discussion and feedback, we will not tolerate review bombing and we will be removing posts that do not follow 
our review guidelines. And it goes on to state, as you'd expect, the statement didn't go down well and the thread is packed with negative replies that take issue with GOG using the phrase review bombing to describe what is going on here. Chandra followed up to say that GOG will not remove reviews that provide information on the game itself and the storefront currently does not, rather those reviews that are against our review guidelines. Those are the ones that basically they're gonna be removing. That sentence kind of came out funny there, but the basically said they're not gonna re remove reviews that are productive or you know criticizing the game appropriately, even if they're negative, but they will probably be removing a lot of the really trolly reviews. Meanwhile, customers are debating what kind of update GOG will provide in the coming weeks. Will a special version of the game be made just for GOG that can be played entirely offline? Personally, I kind of doubt it. I think that they will probably just add some more warnings to the shop page and leave it as it is, but I'm not super familiar with the GOG experience um, because I don't mind the persistent online connections, but that's something that I guess we can follow up with for you guys because, I don't know, internet controversy is always fun to keep up with, especially in it's gaming related, so we like to uh, stay on top of that. Hopefully they'll get the game to a functional state, but otherwise it might seem like you just stick with like Steam or the Epic Game Store for games like this that require a heavy online experience or integration. Moving on to the next piece of news here. One of the Steam Deck's biggest hurdles just disappeared. Easy anti-cheat has come to Linux and Battleeye is inbound. So basically there's a new piece of computing hardware here, similarly to the Switch. It runs off a very unique operating system and people are very concerned that because it's widely accessible to like the Steam library and obviously other PC games that many other people are playing that people would find a way to hack the device and basically allow additional ways to cheat in games. Valve did promise it would work with Easy Anti-Cheat and Battleeye to ensure some of the most popular games will run on its Steam Deck Linux-based gaming handheld and one of the companies is now officially on board. Basically, Easy Anti-Cheat, EAC, now supports Linux and Mac. Not only that, it's specifically set up to work with Proton and Wine compatibility layers that Valve's relying on to bring Windows games to the Steam Deck. So basically, there was a lot of concern again. There'd be a lot of hacking and cheating because the Steam Deck runs off Linux. Linux is very programmer friendly and people were worried that that would affect the gaming experience, but... Valve seems to be pretty confident that they will have a lot of resources to get this easy anti-cheat to battle eye other anti-cheat systems onto the OS so that people can't necessarily exploit it as easily. I'm sure some people will still find ways to cheat, but hopefully it will be much less widespread due to accessibility to these anti-cheat systems. Again, it is based on the developer of the game opting in to the service for the Steam Deck specifically. So some games are already in the mix, like Apex Legends, Dead by Daylight, War Thunder, other games like that in the top 25 essentially are probably a shoe in to get the anti-cheat systems, but it's, uh, it does mention that like PUBG, Destiny 2, Rainbow Six Siege are yet to still be confirmed whether or not they'll be opting in or not. Essentially, Anti-cheat on the Steam Deck, meaning that less people will be able to wall hack you or, you know, aim bot, do all those types of annoying behaviors that really ruin the online gaming experience. We have a tweet here from Battleeye, basically confirming this, that Battleeye has provided native Linux and Mac support for a long time, and we can announce that we will also support the upcoming Steam Deck Proton. This will be done on an opt-in basis with game developers choosing whether or not they want to allow it. I would assume if the game developers don't allow it, the game may not be available on the Steam Deck or might, you know, there, there's gotta be some type of warning system so that people can't get into these games and cheat. I'm sure they will have it well on the under wraps, but if there's a lot of controversy with people cheating via the Steam Deck, we'll have some juicy content to report on for you guys. Now, the last little pieces of information are gonna be Diablo 2 related. Uh, of course, we know that Diablo 2, related, sorry, we know that Diablo 2 did launch this week, and apparently, even though it runs off the legacy coding, the graphics upgrades are pretty demanding on most systems. So they have come out and basically announced that DLSS through NVIDIA will be supported soon with Diablo 2. 
which essentially allows the game to run at like a lower frame rate, a lower um, resolution, and then it will up convert it, basically saving resources for all your processing power, mainly in your video card, and that will allow the game to essentially run at higher settings through the upscaling, but maintain better performance, which is what people are most concerned of. Again, apparently the D2 is pretty resource intensive, especially if you're on like medium or older hardware tech like that, something that's not like brand new state of the art for gaming, it's considerably more noticeable. I haven't had too many problems with it myself, but um, this will be good because it'll allow people that have the newer NVIDIA cards that can take advantage of DLSS to get better performance, better frame rate out of their game. And the last little piece of information here is that Blizzard says Diablo 2 Resurrected's disappearing characters bug should be fixed. It will continue to review the situation to ensure that everything is working like it's supposed to. Essentially, if you guys have been interested in Diablo, you've been playing it at all, you'll know that the specifically North American servers have been having a lot of strain and stress on them. There have been some glitches, some bugs, a lot of disconnections, which have forced people out. I myself had to switch back and forth between the UK servers and the North American servers just to be able to play. And it just illustrates that games, when they come out, you know, expect them to be a little rocky at first. Even some of these very popular, well-established games with all the testing that they may or may not have done, some things still slip through the cracks, but it seems like they're working on it. I know Vicarious Visions, the developers behind this game, the ones that are directly developing it, they are pretty reputable and they're not really involved in too much of the Blizzard controversy whatsoever. So I have faith that they're gonna continue to address bugs and glitches and other issues as they come up and the game will have a pretty seamless and successful, not necessarily launch because it's already launched, but the, the beginning stages of its life, I think are gonna be on an upward trajectory where all of these issues should be fixed and things will continue to smooth out over time and the experience should be pretty good for everybody. That's what I would say. And you know, based off my little experience in the game so far, I have had some issues, but none of them have really turned me off to playing the game, and I've been really enjoying the experience. The nostalgia, really overwhelming. So that's pretty much all the news we have for you today over here on the little Five Nine Featured News segment. As soon as I get more things put on my desk, more things to share with you, and more controversy, more new tech, more new games, more new announcements, I will be sure to be back here talking with it as soon as possible. So hopefully we've earned a sub from you guys that haven't already. Hopefully if you're a regular, you did enjoy the video. With that being said, I'm gonna pass this over to the editors so they can get it up on the channel and we'll be seeing you again soon. Peace out. As always, let us know down in the comments what your thoughts are on this news or any other developing stories that you may have heard. We love to get the feedback from you guys. And with that being said, we'll see you on the next one. Peace out everybody.